Hey, I'm Caroline and I'm just a few days into an amazing two week road trip around the Scottish Highlands and Islands. In the last episode, joined by some friends, I explored the dramatic Glencoe and pushed my body to successfully summit Ben Nevis, the highest mountain in the UK. In today's episode, feeling a little worse for wears and definitely feeling the infamous Nevis knees, I'll be taking it a little easier and plan to visit an impressive canal lock spelled L-O-C-K, not to be confused with the Scottish lock spelt L-O-C-H. We'll brave the rain to get a peek of the Jacobite steam train as it passes over the Glenfinnan viaduct, made famous by the Harry Potter movies. Make a quick pit stop at Eileen Dornan, another well-known site thanks to Hollywood, and the following day meander through the magical and enchanting fairy pools. Today we're all feeling a little bit worse for wears after having yesterday hiked up and back down Ben Nevis. So we are not going to be doing any hiking, which is probably a good thing given that typically, uh, like the Scottish weather, it is raining and it's forecast for rain pretty much all day today. So we've come to the Caledonian Canal and specifically to Neptune Staircase, which is something of an engineering marvel. It was in the early 1800s when this was constructed and it took about 19 years from start to finish and it allows for the canal and the canal boats the barges to be able to rise by 19 meters and the way in which the canal boats can go up by 19 meters because naturally water is going to be pulled down by gravity is through the construction of eight locks. So we're just gonna have a bit of a wander and check them out. quite fortunate in that a couple of sailboats have come through the locks but we had the opportunity to see the swing bridges opening it's a bit of a miserable day today but had it been a little bit more sunny we would have had the most amazing views of Ben Nevis in the background the swing bridges opened up and then the sailboats came on through I was able to help the guys he like yelled up to me and he's like oh can you just wrap the rope around I don't even know what they're called the little Mel things that are sticking out of the ground are supposed to make sure that the boats don't then sail off in the waters. When we started to see the water come gushing through for the boats to start rising up and the lock keeper was just explaining that it's about four boats that they get a day so I feel like we've been really fortunate that we've been able to see a boat come through. The whole course of this it takes 90 minutes for the boats to be able to get from the bottom up by 19 meters. So I think they're gonna be there for a while and it's raining at the moment. So I doubt we're gonna hang around for the full 90 minutes to see them come out at the top here. It was nice to be able to see the locks actually in action. And it's just crazy that something that was built in the very early 1800s is still being used in the 21st century. The way in which the locks work is because the boats that we're watching at the moment are going up the water from the higher lock comes down and into the lower lock that the boats are in and once the higher water level levels at the lower water level the set of gates are then able to open up and then the boats are able to move forward into the next lock they then close the lower gate and then the same process happens again so then from the next lock up we then have water then coming down into the one that the boats are currently in and again when the boats rise up so it's exactly the same height as the next lock up which obviously isn't up anymore because the water's brought it down 
the gates then open and they're able to sail through. Now the rain has pretty much gotten heavier since we've been here so we're going to wrap up now. We are hopefully going to go across to a place called Glen Finnan which has a spectacular viaduct and there is a steam train that goes across it is a rather famous and well-known bridge because it is the one that was used in the Harry Potter films. We have arrived into Glen Finnan and we've ended up parking at the Visitors Information Centre but with everything that's going on at the moment they're not actually open on a Monday and a Tuesday and we're here on a Monday which means we're not entirely sure what time the steam train is due to go over the viaduct so we've all just spent a while on the internet and there's lots of conflicting information as to what time is due to pass over but we do think that there should be two trains one coming back from Maleg the morning service and then one departing Fort William which is the afternoon service and so we're going to have a little bit of a wander. We found a short trail that we can do, but we're just really hoping that we're not away from the viaduct when the trains actually come over. On our drive from Fort William to the Isle of Skye we have made a quick pit stop at Eileen Dornan. Eileen being the Gaelic word for island so this does actually mean that it is the island of Dornan and it's got quite a well-known castle that has featured in a number of different films. Now of course with everything that's going on in the world at the moment with Covid-19 it's shut as per most things but the advantage to this is that normally we would only be allowed to cross the bridge onto the island with the castle on it if we actually purchased a ticket to go inside but they've said that outside of the castle's opening hours you are actually free to go onto the island and have a bit of a wander around so even though i think it would normally be opening hours if all of this wasn't going on we are able to get onto the island today so i'm just going to go and have a little look for, at the castle from the outside
Good morning and welcome to our first full day here in the Isle of Skye. Quite exhausted still from Ben Nevis, we've decided to have the morning off relaxing and we have come along to the Oyster Shack which is behind me. It is out nearish the ferry pools, probably about a 10 minute drive from there and they've got all kinds of fresh seafood which you can either buy raw to take back to your own place to cook or they do have a few things that are on a sale that we can eat here today so we're going to go in, have a little look at what they've got and we're definitely gonna pick up some lunch and eat it because it, I think it's fresh straight from the water that's just down the hill. just arrived at the ferry pools car park and this is an area within the Isle of Skye that I think has been a huge victim of over tourism there were a lot more tourists coming probably because of the likes of Instagram and people understanding that there are these beautiful places within Scotland and then more people are like okay well we want to come too and the locals a bit further down the road in Glen Brittle were experiencing huge problems with tourists who were parking up on the verge of the single track road and locals were finding it really difficult to get through to their homes but more worryingly was that emergency service vehicles such as fire engines and ambulances weren't able to get through so the locals clubbed together created the car park that we've just parked in feels a little bit steep in cost it was five pounds to park the car but when you start to think that actually they've had to pay to build this car park to make sure that we can still come and actually enjoy these ferry pools as uh, probably not a bad shout after all so we'll have a wander up to the ferry pools and see what all the fuss is about into Port Treat in the Isle of Skye for some pub grub and we've decided to go with the haggis, meats and tatties. So the tatties are short for potatoes, the neeps are short for turnips and the haggis is a bit of a Scottish specialty in that it is a sheep's stomach that has been cooked with um, onions and herbs um, and also Scottish oats as well. I've never had it before, but I feel like when I'm in Scotland, I need to try it. So here goes, let's see what it's like. It tastes delicious and it tastes a lot like lamb. Mm, I'm really pleased, I'm really happy. I'm gonna dig in. Coming up over the next few episodes, I'll be exploring the Isle of Skye further with hikes past the Old Man of Storm and out on the Kerrang, affording us some of the best views that I think Scotland has to offer. We'll also be exploring more waterfalls, a gorgeous beach, and taking a curious wander through the enchanting Fairy Glen. 
If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can join me in my Scotland adventures.